Uh, not for the first time, but probably not for the last either. I'm Darren DeMello, looking after this edition of Sweet and Sour. Gary's MIA, anyone know where he's... He'll be fine. I'm sure he'll be fine back soon. Talking about all the big issues, as always, tonight, uh, stalking is one of the things that we shall cover. Sex, spirituality, and probably some other things too that don't start with the letter S. Well, I guess we'll all find out together after this. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on there, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. How's about some chili? It's time for Sweet and Sour. Welcome to it. Hello. Darren DeMello looking after it here in place of Gary, who is, uh, well, the less said about it, the better. I think he's off on official government duties, but I don't really know. He went to the royal wedding. Did he? Yeah. Ah, well, I hope he brought us back some cake. Do you reckon, we'll get into this a bit later, but do you reckon they keep a bit of the frozen cake in the in the freezer for years afterwards, the royals, Absolutely. after that? Maybe oh, I should yeah. introduce it's people. It's traditional. It yeah. is. Yeah. But shall I introduce the lovely panel that we have in front of us here? Starting on my left, um, man about town, uh, and uh, am I correct in saying it was a Suna practitioner? Uh, that is correct, yes. Nice one. Do you want to enlighten us on what Suna is? I, I, to, to uh, certain individuals in the world, they know that my practice is extensive and that I will be there when called for the Suna. Or later? Uh, well, I get there as soon as possible. More will be discovered as we go. Lovely to have your board, though. Thank you very much. Wonderful range of hats, too, I believe you have. Uh, yes, I'm a bit of a collector. You can Love check the website me. if you want to collect them, too. Uh, with us as well is Carmen. Hi. Hi. Um, interior designer, yes. decorator, specialising in? Kitchens, more so. And what's the, what's the, what's the go-to surface when it comes to kitchens? Stone at the moment, for domestic kitchens, okay. yeah. Oh, but is it, what, stainless steel? That old stainless steel if you're going commercial? Yeah. Do people want to have commercial ones in their homes? And actually, more so now with the industrial like, rise, with the in industrial look, yeah, they are there actually. There we go. All right. We'll see if we can find some kitchen angles on some of these questions. If not, that's okay. Yes. I'm sure we've got plenty that we'll talk about over yes. the course of this. Uh, no stranger to this panel is Stacey. Hello. Hello, Darren. Um, you have abnormally long arms, you were telling me. <laughs> I didn't say anything of the sort, Darren. Okay. okay you made that up. Maybe abnormally is not necessarily what you said in your description. But can you explain how it is that you came to this conclusion? I may have said I had longer arms than my sister, who is the same height as me. Okay. And I can't believe you just mentioned that on well, TV. Listen, these are the things that you bring up, so these are the things that we discuss. Maybe you should write a letter in at some point. Maybe I should. Okay. Uh, and a brand newie to the to the desk, to the to the whole operation here. Um, Sean, welcome. Thank you. Your field is property? I'm in property, yes, that is correct. Uh, tell us what you do and who you work for. I sell real estate, so residential homes, and I work for Century 21. Okay, and we can find you at the address underneath your name on the screen, no doubt. No doubt. No we'll doubt. get that on there for next time round. Welcome. Me. Here we go. Um, lots of good stuff to talk about, lots of issues to get into, um, and of course, you know, a letter or two that involves stalking off the top here, so let's get into this. I'm a 20-year-old man, our first letter writer says to us. I've been going to the same hairdressing salon about once a month for a year now. Each time I went, I always had the same female hairdresser cut my hair. She's older than me and married. Ooh. It's a unisex salon and has two females working there. This is a lot of interesting detail he's given us here. One day recently when I phoned the salon to book an appointment, the other lady who worked there told me not to come anymore because the lady who usually cut my hair thought I was stalking her. My question to the panel is now that this Me Too movement is gaining momentum, should men only go to male hairdressers? Was I doing the wrong thing by going to the same female hairdresser every month? I never thought anything of it until the other woman ear blasted me over the phone. This is Michael F. Elizabeth of South Australia asking, I think, a fair question. I think it's a fair question to ask. Uh, Carmen, is it stalking? Um, I'm just, there's a lot of detail here in the beginning <laughs> of the question, but there's a whole heap of detail that's actually not involved, mm -hmm. like missing in this. And so basically, like looking at it from a whole, I have to actually say, um, well, that lady's lucky to actually have the um, him as well, a client. Exactly right. Is that not what hairdressers want? Is well, people that come back on exactly, a and it's and it's competitive industry, and it's one that doesn't actually suffer when there's like recession and stuff. So you know what? Cut your losses and go and find something else. I believe everything happens for a reason. Yeah, and you'll find somewhere else if you just better. Know. Okay. 
Now, when was the last time you went to a hairdresser? Bill? Let me. Well, it was here back in 1970. <laughs> Believe it or not, mate, I used to have a flat top. You know, I was sporting the 90s. Did, did you go to a regular? Did you go on a regular basis? Mate, I cut this myself this hey. afternoon. There you go. That's oh. grey shit happening, and uh, that's not really a swear word. And uh, yeah, cut myself. This geezer must be a little bit dodgy. You reckon? I heard the story that once a guy was in the hairdressers, mm -hmm. he had the apron on, oh. and he was cleaning his glasses. <laughs> really? And she thought that he was doing something else, so she asked him not to come back again. So is maybe this... this geezer's a bit dodgy. Is this how you... With the lazy eye. Is this how you did it? Is this how you described it in the court case anyway? Well, <laughs> well, Your Honour, <laughs> still on parole, Shh, don't tell anyone. No, I, I, you you might, think there might have been... You, it's it's got to be him. There's something not being said here. This yeah. is from his point of view. It's yeah. missing a lot of detail. Mm. There is, isn't it? Because she just rang up and goes, no, geez, you're not welcome anymore. So. Sean, what do you reckon? Ever had someone tell you not to come back to a hairdressing salon? No, no, no. I've never had it. And look, I've been hey, going... Can I say, you do have hair that looks like oh. it's it's been, you, you know, near a hairdressing salon. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say. Is that it's rude? fair to say. Yeah, no, okay. it's very welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. I'll keep telling what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 I, um, I've been going to the same hairdresser every second week and never had this pop up. So I feel like there is a lot of detail missing in this letter. Do you ever see things of an untoward nature that happen in hairdressing salons, like say what Lewis was describing? I haven't seen any glasses being polished while I've been getting my hair cut. Okay, no, that's probably no. a good thing. You could probably be thankful. I could be thankful. I've got a feeling though, yeah. Sean, that if Michael looked like you, yeah. Well, maybe it'd be a different story. They were trying to book him in early. Do you, do you think? think? Yeah, man. Do you think maybe the problem lies in the mirror? What do you reckon, Stace? <laughs> well, as everyone else has said, there's a lot of detail missing here. But on the surface of it, he hasn't done anything wrong. But then again, if he's going to have done something wrong, he's not going to mention it. No. So, but, you know, maybe this woman's got a bit got a bit funny with all this Me Too business, because every second person was writing Me Too if someone looked sideways at them. And he's been going for over a year, every month. He's a regular good customer. And no, men shouldn't only be going to male hairdressers and females that's what, as yes, well. That's one question. Should, do we all agree on that one? You don't need to go to your own no. sex hairdresser? I think I've gone to male hairdressers. I've gone to female hairdressers. Fair enough. Great. You're an open-minded person. That's exactly. what you're saying, Stace. Even exactly. though you've got long arms. And don't talk about my long arms okay, again. Okay, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh. You could have been perfect in the field of hairdressing, thinking of, sorry, again, uh, I'm referring to this. This is my knuckles the ground, <laughs> don't talk about Mel Snook's scissor hands. Aye. <laughs> Something in that. My little fella had to tell me about this Me Too thing. Really? I had no idea. How old is he? 15. Well, he's across these he's things, he's that's good to know. Now listen, we always like to know what you think about these things, and we put a similar question out there on social media, asking is it easy to be mistaken and misconstrued as a stalker in today's climate? What do you reckon the results were? Do you have an idea? Well, this is how it panned out. 55% of you reckon, yes, it is easy to be taken the wrong way in this current climate. 45% saying no. So who knows? Well, I'm forever misunderstood, man. <laughs> yeah. What, when you're hiding in bushes? That's weird. <laughs> weird, mate. What'd you say? What when you're hiding in the bushes? Yes, in my, in my map. Uh, also underneath maybe the... Um, the protective gown that comes whilst getting your hair cut. What about that geezer in that um, army clad uniform that was jumping out? Grabbing when? Chicks yeah. about six months. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. Months. yeah that's mm. madness. I've never heard about that. That's mm. crazy. G.I. Joe. Kiva, man. Kiva. Right. Yeah, not the same no, G.I. Joe's yeah. as when uh, I was a kid. Can, no. can I uh, wrap this up? Go, would you like to? Stalkers. Yeah. Just like pedophiles. Yeah. Boof. Yeah. See you later. Swim with the fishy. Ooh. Sweet. Morning shot in the head. Best we go to a break and recover. No, <laughs> we agree on something. More on the way. Hello, welcome back. Hello, Another Sam. edition of Sweet and Sour in progress here. And you know, we do like to hear from you. Sweetandsour.net.au is the website. If you've got a question, if you've got a problem, if no one else can help and if you can find us, maybe you can hire the A-team. Um, <laughs> follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I could do it in the accent, but that'd just get tired. Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all of the ways up there. Uh, and perhaps, perhaps we will be helping you get through life in a in an easier and calmer kind of way. Uh, also, get you amongst some prize action too, um, up for grabs, 
if you do say right in and we read out your letter on the panel here, um, your chance to go to the movies. And this time around, we could send you off to tea with the dames, featuring our own dame of the movies, Natalie Cameron from NRC Communications. Well, I say featuring, she was nice enough to supply us with those movie passes. So there you go. Send them in. Uh, just like our next letter writer has done. Panellists, pens ready, brains engaged, set to roll. Dear panellists, my friend's partner is an ungrateful swine. Oh, I had a dollar for every time I'd heard that. How do I tell her he's no good for her? <coughs> They've been, I love how this is in quote marks, together for about a year. I use that term loosely because he's more often than not out with his mates rather than spending time with her. Undoubtedly, the reason they're still a couple is, aha, that he got her pregnant. And little Ashley was born three months ago but he'll barely lift a finger to help with the baby or with the housework. He's, okay, he, he's got goals. He's aspiring to become a rapper, something I can't condone, because I think he should be getting a real job and supporting his family. He managed to convince his family to send him to Sydney for a week to pursue a record deal, and he persuaded her to lend him over $500 spending money, which is pretty much all the savings she had. After four days there, he called her asking for even more cash. He was staying with friends, so all I can assume is he drank the rest of it. Drank, if you're lucky. How irresponsible can someone be? The only reason I can think she's still with him is that she's hoping he'll make it big and then her money worries will be over. But that's a terrible way to bring up a kid. There's a lot going on here. What if he doesn't make it? How can I tell her that she's being selfish? Uh, and he is, she says, and, and he better... She's better off on her own. This is from a very concerned Candace in Broadbeach in Queensland. As I say, there is a lot in there that we need to deal with. Uh, Lewis, I think you are yes. you are first and, and best equipped to handle this situation here. Why, thank you. They call and give... me the male okra in there. <laughs> I've heard they that. Do. I've heard that. What's your first advice? Mate, it's a tough one. My first advice is, is Candace being biased because she's been a bit too nosy. What's going on there? Do you know what I mean? But if he is... Uh, if he is um... You reckon she might also be a bit... Green eyed, a bit jealous at the loss of her friend. Hey, where is she going? Oh, I don't know. If he's, never, if he's never home, she can always pop in and say hello. Well, yeah, this is you true. know what I mean. Yeah, okay. um, I don't know what to do with this one, Gaz, because she's, she seems a bit medley. What do you think about him being a rapper? Is he friends with Dean? You're asking me because I'm black. <laughs> yeah, he is, you know, he's asking me because I'm black. <laughs> well, I think it's a good thing, man. You know, we get some shit happening. And... No, um, I don't know. No. Well, someone's got to do it. Well, this is it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is that realistic? I mean, do you necessarily say, no, 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 just because that's his goal? You, you can't you... write him off just for that reason, can you? Well, you, well, if he doesn't do any housework, that's not on, is it? No. And if he doesn't look after his bumpkins, that's not on either, yeah. is it? So, to me, no-brainer. But she, she doesn't say that a mate complains about anything. A mate could be quite happy having someone that is there and not there. She's doing a thing with a kid and lovely to job. Poor Eric and Carmen, is there a problem? Um, I just think let it run its course, basically. Mm. Um, you know, like Mind everything. You, there, there is a kid involved, as, as Candace is very... A lot, of, a lot of relationships, unfortunately, break up nowadays with children involved. That's just the what happens in life. But um, I'm just more concerned about him wanting to be um, a rapper. You are concerned about that? Yeah. You don't think that's a, that's a viable goal for a lot of people? Look, you know, it's a very hard industry, and, it's, and obviously he's... he's um, goal orientated if that's where he wants to go. Are there many Queensland rappers? Can yeah, there's Dean from Married at First Sight. That's what I was asking. Oh, I'm with you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now I understand. Yes. Stacey, do you know any rappers? No. No? I do not. Okay. No, no, any rappers. Do you approve of them? Um, look, everyone, you know, each for their own, each for their own, do what makes you happy. <laughs> But Candace is a very noisy person because her friend is, as everyone said, her friend's not complaining. It's not really her business. All she can do is let her friend do her own thing, be there if it all falls apart, and see what happens. She's making a bit of something out of nothing, perhaps. Well, it's not really her business. I don't know why she's up in everyone's face because if the friend's not unhappy, um, just let her do as she pleases. And when she, it all falls apart, she can be there to pick up Swoop on him to help out. What do you reckon, Sean? Is she jealous or what's going on? Look, I think that um, there's an, a lot of information being provided here by <laughs> Candace. So she must be around a lot. So maybe she could help out with some of the housework, perchance. <laughs> that, maybe that, she could do all of the square. Maybe, maybe that could be the solution here. But I think in all seriousness, if there is a child involved, this is when it does become serious. And 
you wouldn't want um, little Ashley to be put in harm's way. But look, the guy's got dreams and goals and we can't hate him for trying to be a rapper. Can't I don't fault think. him for that. All right, well now, we always like to know what you think about these things. We put it out there. Should you tell us, uh, or should you tell your friend when it's clear her boyfriend is just no good, I didn't do it right. He, he ain't no good girlfriend, that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put the head wobble in. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a wobble more. Eighty-three percent yes say you should interfere when it comes to issues like that. I say interfere, maybe I'm biasing it. Seventeen percent no, stay out. If he's if he's getting heavy and he's smacking the bat, then jump in yeah. and you know sort him out. Kill him. Like my girl says, just let him his course, mate. Eighty-three percent of people would say jump in though if your friend is in a bad relationship and tell her. How do you think that's going to get don't taken? You can't lose a friend. They, it no. depends. If she doesn't want to hear it, she's not going to listen. They mm. might say it, mate, but no one does it, do they? Yeah. It's a, in an ideal world. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Well, as always, we love to know what you think about these things and the, the overwhelming response is jump in and help out your friend. We'll help some more friends out after this. Please do not try this at home. These people are paid professionals at making up biased and controversial opinions. Sweet and sour! Time goes so quick on this panel. Sweet and sour, last bit of it here. Lovely to have you back on board. Straight into our last letter, and we're talking religion, the big stuff here. Benning Claremont wants to know, dear sweet and sour, religion is destroying the youth of today. Surely it's time to call it a day. When I, yeah, they'll do that. When I was in my late teens, I went to parties and had fun. I drink a little, as did all of my peers. Sure, we'd get a little bit drunk and silly sometimes, but we never hurt anyone. It was part of growing up. Now, I see so many kids hitting 18 or 19 that don't drink, don't party, even don't have sex before marriage. With such a vast amount of self-declared atheists in Australia, I thought that all these outdated lifestyles would peter out. Wow. In 10 years' time, these kids are going to become the most boring adults ever. In my opinion, religion has had its day. It got people organised to build civilizations and adhere to a moral code. That moral code is now part of our society and the civilization has been built, so move on. So why do we need religion is the question I'm paraphrasing here. Surely it's just slowing the progress of mankind, just like clairvoyance, giving people false hope that they can contact the dead. I can't see the difference. I hope the panel agrees it's all a big waste of time, energy and money. Ben in Claremont WA, thank you for your assessment. Sean, um, Wow. Do you reckon religion's had its day? Look, I was uh, I was born and bred the Italian way on the on the Catholic system. Is, is that separate to how other people do it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. I, I, look, I I think that um, that there's there's bigger things that we should probably be worrying about with our youths of today, and one of those is an eight year old in my family thinking. Um, that she can get more likes on Instagram. That probably stresses me out a lot more than what religion would, if I'm honest. Really? Yeah. Do you think religion would help with that situation? Who you knows? It might I, be a solution. It might be a solution. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? But okay. I'm not totally against it. I think the foundations to it can be quite good. Um, but Ben from Claremont obviously has a lot of time on his hands because that is a big letter. Stacey? I don't think there's anything wrong with religion at all. A lot of people... Nothing? Well, I don't know. A lot of people really follow religion. You've heard of the Spanish Inquisition? Look, I'm not. I'm not a big religious person, but I know a lot of people that do follow their religion. It's really important to them, and you know that's great. I don't have to be religious. They are. That's fantastic. Each to their own. Wow, it's like a James Bond movie, isn't it? Live and let live. live. Yeah, almost like a James almost. Bond movie. Almost. Well, it's very, it's very, it's very grown up of you. We asked yes. everyone else too. We put it out there. Um, will religion ever completely die out in the Western world? Here's your response via social media. No, 83%. Mm. Wow, 17% say yes, it will eventually. Mm. Carmen, do you reckon it'll, it'll go its own way or should we all just learn to get along? I just think, again, I keep saying this for every question we've had tonight, <laughs> but just let it run its course. Like, obviously there's other things to worry about. And, like, I'm really happy that you used to get drunk when you were younger, but, like, if people <laughs> want to actually, you know, save their money because it's expensive to buy houses nowadays and, like, get a job and do stuff and make better of their life, great for them. How does it affect your life? I mean, 
It's very preachy. I mean, I, yes. dare I say, the uh, these kids don't drink, don't party, don't have sex before marriage. That, that did that used to not be a good thing. It's a good. It is a good thing, isn't it? Well, generally, I reckon. Did you have any fun before you got married, or? Or, is, a virgin. Is, is, is my wife watching? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, dear. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, religion is good. Practitioners, not so good. What about clairvoyance? So, no, no, no one seems to have leapt in on that one there. Because he, he was throwing in the, the religion with clairvoyance. Did At the end that? of the day, hope. Life, there, there is no life without hope. Everyone hopes for something. New car, new, new, new wall. You and I hope for hair regrowth. One day. You yeah, know, everyone well, hopes. So up here anyway. No I think hope is good. Me. And uh, if it wasn't for religion, a few crew in my neighbourhood growing up wouldn't be here. Because, you know, straight and narrow, right and wrong, left and right, black and white. So I reckon religion is good. And if the kids aren't knobbing each other early, <laughs> right, the only drawback yeah. is later life, maybe they might need a sooner practitioner. So, it's it's sorry, it, it's is Sunnah in any way related to religion? Because uh, we didn't really get anywhere close to that, did we? In some religions, it's forbidden. Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much to our wonderful panel the for devil. their incredible work thus far. Um, you, I think you've really helped us get to the bottom Thank of this. You. Do, do we have a favourite letter that we throw our prize away to? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, who would like to have our very first letter be the one that takes the prize? Stalking related hairdressing? I think he needs to be looked after. Yeah. Hands yes. up for that one? Yeah. yeah. Is that the sunglasses? For the girlfriend? Yeah. The sunglasses? I think he can stalk undercover. Yeah, give him the sunglasses. Yeah. 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 Great. So we're and point. send him a raincoat as we're well. We're doing that. And before we go, thank you all. You're welcome. We're going to check out a little bit of music. May I introduce to take us away, Nirvana Fennell. Thank you. See you next time. Can I go pee pee now? You can go. Thank you. <laughs> Summer loving, babe, summer